Hello traders, welcome back to my channel and to a new video. Before we dive right in, make sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up so I can keep bringing you all this content. And yeah, first thing I'm gonna go over the general diagram and elements of what makes up this pattern. And then we're gonna look at three examples. This specific pattern I like to use mostly on the lower time frames when I'm day trading. And again, this works on all types of markets. So there's gonna be a few elements that are gonna make up this pattern. There's a whole concept of fair value value gaps for example and the breakers which I already have videos dedicated just to this one so I'm not gonna go super in depth into each one but basically the unicorn pattern is a combination of both so what you're gonna have first is the element of the breaker block how is a breaker block formed well let's say you have a market that is trending down and again let's assume this is a five minute chart which is what i like to use when i'm day trading on lower time frames so we're coming down market makes a significant lower low come up and make a lower high and then we come down and we break below this previous low but then the market very quickly gets back on top of this previous low and not only does it come back up but it breaks right through the previous area of supply or resistance that formed this new lower low and breaks up above once that happens at this point when we have a candle close confirming above this previous swing high then we say that the market structure has now shifted to the upside because now we have made a higher high okay so basically we're gonna have a low or obviously the inverse would be the case if we're at the top so this is a very useful pattern to look for entries on reversals from a trend down to a move up or from a trend up into a breakdown and move lower so the whole premise of this is that you know that traders when we have significant swing high or lows people tend to put their stops resting right beyond those points so what we call a stop hunt or a liquidity raid basically means there's a bunch of stops and liquidity resting here market comes and breaks through taps into those areas and executes all those orders and then reverses and then once we break above there this is formed the breaker block which will be this outline here and then the premise is once the breaker block is formed since this market if this would have continued the downtrend then this pullback and test should have been rejected and we should have made a lower high and a new lower low just to continue the downtrend behavior but since this just broke up now this previous area Area of expected resistance we now expect support coming from the other side we made a higher high so now we expect to make a higher low on a retest and then we look to get long with a stop beyond the low of the raid okay so that's the premise of the breaker block which is the first element in the unicorn pattern second element is that this pattern is usually going to happen within moments when markets get a lot of volumes and volatility coming in specifically during london or new york market opens because as you know once this market's open price gets pretty volatile a lot of volumes are fused in and then we can expect to see some runs of previous significant swing levels so that's where we monitor the reactions and then the last element that is used to confirm the unicorn pattern is that within this area this impulsive move after we raided the stops and we reclaimed the level this impulsive move that breaks and shifts market structure there is a fair value gap within this move here what is a fair value gap where a fair value gap is basically when we have a impulsive candle usually a large long candle body 
and then we have on either side we have a lower candle and a higher candle in this case because this is a move up but there's no overlap of wicks on either side of the impulsive candle or sometimes there is a group of candle with several small fair value gaps but basically when we don't have any overlap between wicks on either side of this candle in this area this is a fair value gap and this tends to be areas where price tends to retrace in to retest or fill them before rejecting so the fair value gap is there just as a second factor of confluence that on the pullback we expect market to hold here and eventually push in order to make new highs and then we would be looking to get long on the trade okay so that is the premise let us go now and see three quick examples of how we would play this trade first let's go into the crude oil market all these examples i'm showing them on a five minute chart but you know you can use this in other time frames as well but since we're dealing with quick moves during the london or new york open it's usually better to focus on a lower time frame and that way we get more detail on the trade as well so in this case we have here a market that is trending down pretty much since the previous day then we started the new day right here the new session we come down and then right here at 3 a.m eastern time we have the london open so once we know we're in the london open we're aware now of our swing levels and again this doesn't mean that the pattern is going to occur like on the first minute of the london open or the new york open but you're going to pay attention within the next hour or two hour range so we have here right after the london open we had a very impulsive move down market makes a swing low we come up we make a lower high we push down and then right here you can see that we break below the swing low but then market quickly comes right back above this level and then we have this move right here we have four or three large five minute candles in a row that push up and break above this previous swing high making a new higher high so right here we have our market structure break and you can see we actually made a double top here with this previous level of resistance this swing high here so then right here we have all our three elements lining up we have an impulsive move right after the london open we had a significant low that was rated we had a stop hunt right below the swing low that was quickly reversed and then we formed this big breaker block because in this case we have the last group of candles the last push up that led to the move down that made the stop run so this whole conglomeration of candles is going to be our breaker block ideally we would like to have a smaller block but since all these candles are all overlapping and they're all part of the move up that led to the raid then we take that whole area as our breaker block and then inside of this breaker block you can see there's two fair value gaps here because there is another one right here but you know as you can see this is a very shallow pullback so this is much less odds of this working out so i would rather wait for this larger fair value gap to be tested and then to bounce now the general guidelines for trading this indicates that as soon as you have the confirm close out then what you look for is to get long on a test back to the top of the breaker with a stop beyond the breaker so if you want to be very conservative and you have a pretty good target that's far away that you can get a good risk reward then you could put the stop beyond the low of the stop hunt but since we have such a wide breaker i would put it just right beyond the breaker area here and then as far as target we know this is a big resistance area but obviously the risk reward in this is terrible you wouldn't want to take something that is point 
1.5 risk reward so we need to zoom out and see if we have another significant target and you can see we have a really big swing high so a lot of draw of liquidity here so we could have aimed for this swing high right there and so as you can see in this case this could have been a play we made a 2.3 RNR or if you have a very wide breaker then you could look to enter on a retest of the fair valley gap so let's say if you would have gotten right in there into the fair valley gap there within the breaker this is a 5.3 rnr trade so that would have been a very nice trade right there let's go into the next example this is in the nasdaq five minutes as well this happened right at the new york open this was a non-farm payroll announcement so it came out at 8 30 a.m so we had this huge impulsive candle obviously right before any news announcement like this i would advise that you don't have any positions open or any orders set because these are very unpredictable and you can see the size of this move you could have easily just gotten liquidated if you get yourself positioned wrong on this move so let the move happen and then over the course of the next few minutes next hour then you can see how things settled and as you can see we had this impulsive move we made this low right here we pull back we push lower again and then you can see right here we have three straight candles that are failing to break below this low buyers are stepping in at this lows and then right here right before the new york open we have this push up so now we formed our block right here and within this block we now have a fair valley gap marked off right here and then for this obviously before you get into any trades you want to have your target area set as well because you need to know if the risk to reward is worth it in this case this is the first obvious target into this broken swing low and beyond that right here the last consolidation pre breakdown in this case this block is formed by the two candles that pushed up before we had the raid on this low right here and so if we bring our rnr tool in this case we would have looked to gotten in right on a retest of the block aiming for this first trouble area right at this low and then our stop would have been just beyond the breaker block and you can see a two rnr again you know it's a decent trade if you want to be a lot more aggressive you could have had your entry at the fair valley gap but again you can see this entry was almost perfect here it's not always like this but if you take your entries at the fair valley gaps and not at the top or bottom of the breaker blocks you risk missing out on opportunities because the market won't necessarily come retest such as this example we're going to see this is the last example here we have the s p 500 futures this move happened one hour after the london open at 3 a.m right here we had the market coming up on a uptrend for two hours on the five minute chart and then you can see right here we had this significant swing high right here this area of resistance then we had this push down this two candles pushing down before this reverses we came back up and right here on this candle we rated the liquidity up above this and very quickly we just break down and then we have this very impulsive move down here this is now our breaker block right there and then within this breaker block we have right here a fair valley gap we have three consecutive red candles and the big candle in the middle there's no overlapping wicks on either side so this area would be our fair valley gap and then right here on this candle as soon as we close outside of our breaker block then that's where we would look to set our orders 
for an immediate retest to get short whenever markets would come back to test the breaker our stop would be just beyond the breaker block and then as you can see in this example we actually did not reach back into the fair value gap so if you would have put your order to sell right here you would have missed out and you would have not been filled so if you want to be more conservative, it's better to just get in at the edge of the breaker block, assuming that, you know, it is not really, really wide. Otherwise, it might be better to look to get on the fair value gap if we get there. OK, and then here, you know, as far as targets, we have this first significant swing low. The R&R on this is not like that great. There's only 125. You could be more aggressive and have your stop just beyond the fair value gap. That makes it a little bit better. But then also if you zoom out, you can see after this swing low, we have the next swing low here and liquidity resting here. So then you know you could have had a target further away this is a two and a half rnr trade so this is a much better odds but again you can see how this would have been a nice one as well so that's pretty much it for the video hope you enjoyed it any questions comments leave them below if you want to learn much more about my trading strategies and other smart money concepts that I use in conjunction with volume profile, order flow, etc. Make sure to check out my course page and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.